at a really quick way that you can discover which products are performing well or not performing well over a certain time frame. So sometimes you just might want to see, well, what is the trend in sales? And in some cases, you need to identify that very fast if you're in a, in a, in a retail environment, or sometimes it can be a more longer term time frame on a, on a half yearly or yearly environment. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you how you can identify trends really quickly and really simply uh, on a quarterly basis, and then also we can transition to a monthly basis from that. First of all, we're just going to start with total sales. So a core metric, it doesn't need to be total sales, it can be uh, it can be a range of things, but obviously in this case, uh, when we're looking at product sales, so sales makes a, a lot of sense. This, this technique could be used in different ways as well. But in this case, we're going to look at total sales, but we need to identify, well, what is the growth from one period to the next? And we're going to look at it from a quarterly basis. So I'll show you, first of all, let's create a table, and you'll see that we, we, we can get the sales per quarter in a relatively straightforward fashion. All we've got to do is cr uh, create the quarterly context, and we can do that by dragging in the quarter and year column, and then associating the total sales column to that. But what if we wanted to see, well, what was the growth quarter on quarter? So what was the growth from this quarter, this current quarter, whatever context it is, versus the quarter before? So in this specific example, Q3 2015, what was the difference between this to Q2 2015? And if you saw, if you uh, were able to get this, and then you were able to see uh, months uh, that were one after the other, and they were all negative, well then you would see, a, you could identify that as a, um, you know, a downward moving trend in your sales. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So the way we do it is, we just need to add, and there's some additional bit of logic here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna add quarterly sales growth. And what we need to do is we just need to compare in one measure the difference between this current, so I've got total sales. Actually, I need to go divide. So we'll go uh, divide total sales. And we're going to divide it by calculate total sales. But instead of total sales of this particular quarter, we're going to jump back to the next last quarter. I'm going to use date add, which is a, a great time intelligence function. And then I'm just going to put in dates here and then number of intervals. So we can actually just put one because we, we are able to jump back a quarter interval. And then I'm going to just put the alternative result, uh, which is going to be zero. And then the last thing we have to do is we have to go minus one there to actually just get the growth, the percentage growth. So if I now put this as a percent and I drag this into the canvas here, you'll see, or the table rather, you'll see that we're actually getting percentage growth month on month, which is great. So as we can see for quarter three here, we are down 8.09% from quarter two the year before. But we want to identify specific products here. We want to see trends in products. The first thing we've, we've got to do, we've got to get rid of these erroneous numbers. These numbers don't really mean anything because we don't have um, uh, numbers before uh, that can aggregate to anything uh, that means anything. So we're going to get rid of Q3 backwards here. So I can do that by just jumping into... Uh, the visual level filter, I'm gonna highlight all of these and get rid of that. Okay, so now we have the percentage growth there. But we wanna look at products, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of sales here. I'm gonna turn this into a matrix and then I'm gonna go and find my products column and I'm gonna actually substitute that in for the rows and then now check this out. We can, we can see the product growth per product every single quarter. So now we have the results, which is great. But just by looking at that, I can't really tell anything quite honestly. It's very, very difficult. So how do we how do we solve this? How do we actually make this visually compelling or or through you know by looking at it visually we can quickly tell what is going on. Now can now a new feature in Power BI about relatively new is conditional formatting and we can conditional format these. So I'm going to um we're obviously going to go go find the values amount, the quarterly sales growth, and then find conditional formatting. And this brings up a conditional formatting box. Now the one issue with this is you, you can't create your own custom colors at the moment, or you can individually create custom colors. It doesn't associate to themes, but it doesn't matter so much at the moment. So I'm just gonna put number 
uh, and I'm going to put this to red and then I'm going to choose number again and if it's higher than zero then we'll just call it. Now if I go OK you'll see that it now colors in and we can see uh, month, uh, quarter after quarter how we are actually going uh, for a particular product. Is it trending up? Is it trending down? It's pretty cool, right? And then what we could do, say we wanted to transition. So I mentioned we can we can do this on a monthly basis as well. Say we wanted to transition to a monthly basis. So I just copied and pasted that, um, uh, that table or that matrix and I'm going to come in and I'm going to copy and paste this measure. I'm going to go instead of quarterly sales, I'm going to go monthly sales growth. And all I've got to do is come in here, change the, this, uh, the, this interval, and then substitute these in here and grab my month and year. And then now we've got month and we've got it by month and year. So if it was say say we were in a retail store and you actually truly needed to know you you know you're selling you're selling um, um, you know, supermarket you're selling things you know, constantly every single day and you need to identify trends really quickly then this is probably going to be more appropriate. And then I'm just going to make sure this is actually percentage. And again, we can conditional format this as we did the last one. Make, uh, make the lower one stand out and also the positive stand out. And here we can see, well, if there was concurrently lots of these negative numbers, uh, then we've got issues. We've got, to, we've got to work out what's going on with that particular product. If uh, on the other side of the coin, if it's going up um, and going up substantially, then obviously we want to know that and understand why. Why is it, why is it going up substantially? I love this technique. And think about how you could use this in different ways. Uh, you're not just limited to sales. You could actually use this technique with profits, uh, profit margins, seeing how they're expanding or contracting. Uh, you know, there's many different ways you can swing it. So good luck with it. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.